Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Alabi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about rebuilding my luxury shoe collection, my $10,000 luxury shoe collection from scratch. So we have a very action packed video for you today. So I want to start by welcoming back all of my subscribers and thanking you guys for sticking with me, even though it's been a while since I've made a video for you guys. And I want to welcome all of you guys who are new and tell you a little bit about myself. So I live here in New York City in the studio apartment. I've been in the fashion industry for a little over 10 years now in buying and merchandising product development for a lot of your favorite brands, your favorite collections, your favorite retailers. And so I've always created videos where I kind of distill the information that I use in my career, my professional career, and distill that into digestible little morsels that you guys can take to build your own personal wardrobes. So I'm back, I'm back at it. But I have to be honest, after the last year or so, Fashion is not my whole life, and it's not yours either, so you're gonna get more videos from me. They're just not all gonna be about fashion. If that's cool, then let's move forward. Um, before we kinda get into the shoe tea of it all, please like and subscribe this video so you can see more as I'm posting, especially more on this particular journey, cause rebuilding a collection from scratch is a journey, so there will definitely be more videos in this series. So. I know you're asking yourself, why are you rebuilding your collection from scratch? Like, did it get ruined in a fire, a flood? Did it get stole? No, none of that. I've had a lot of change in my life. I think as a lot of us have, have, have had over the past year. And I would say two things in particular had led me to completely selling all of my shoes on the internet, on the internet. That's how my mom says it, the internet. Shout out to Nigerian moms and aunts and everyone. Um, but I ended up selling all of my luxury shoes, mainly on Poshmark, but just kind of like wherever I could um, in 2020 for two reasons. One, you know, I go through these crazy feng shui attacks where I just look at things and I'm like, we are not using this. We, it needs to be gone. I'm that way. I, I, I just am. I do, I'm not a collector. God bless all the women who have turned a spare bedroom into their closet and there's shoes lining the wall. That's not my life. That's not my situation. One, because I live in New York City and apartments are this big, so I would never want to take up most of my living space for clothes. Shout out to Carrie Bradshaw who kept sweaters in her oven. I don't. I wouldn't. Um, so one, I'm not a collector. But also two... I really like to use things. I use all of my stuff. Like I've just been that way. Like that $10,000 collection I'm referencing. Um, I wore all those shoes all the time. And the second I stopped wearing them, I really wanted to reevaluate whether I wanted them or needed them or not. Also, I fell in love over quarantine, got me a little quarantine bay and he had an incredible sneaker collection and because of you know the pandemic and not being able to like go on like date dates we spent a lot of time outside and it just really made me have a more casual style as I sit before you in tool but I really developed a more casual style over quarantine so just having a casual style not knowing when things were going to open back up and not knowing when I'd wear these things again I just really lost interest in having ten thousand dollars worth of stilettos like legitimately 120 millimeter stilettos that was my entire collection speaking of 120 millimeter stilettos another reason why i decided to get rid of my collection was because she's getting old and i'm not saying older women cannot wear stilettos but it's so weird to say this word out loud but arthritis runs in my family i'm 35 30 fabulous five and I've started to notice that all of my joints from the waist down are betraying me I have suprination in my right ankle extreme suprination so my right ankle rolls my knees are trash and that's just from I've been a runner most of my adult life and running a lot on tread and that's not great for your knees and then oh I'm not done and then I have a FAI don't remember what that stands for hip impingement on my left hip. So if you're imagining my bones from the waist down, there's a rolly ankle on the right, bad knees in the middle, and a 
tight hip on the left. So I really want to be good to my body in every single way, especially as I'm like five years away from 40. I know for some people that sounds scary, but it's really exciting to me and it's really making me think about how I can make my body work for me for the rest of my life. And 120 millimeter stilettos ain't it. So I just, you know, with developing a more casual point of view about fashion uh, with, you know, being stuck inside and not knowing when I'd wear these stilettos ever again with my achy joints, not treating me well. I just was like, let's get rid of it. So I got rid of my entire collection. Like I pulled down every single box, took pictures and listed them all over. I mainly sold on Poshmark. I'm saying that it's a little Poshmark plug. Feel free to follow me on Poshmark, follow my closet because I sell things all the time now. I've really gotten a mind towards sustainability in recent years, especially in fashion, especially as someone who had a career where I developed fast fashion. I did that. I did develop fast fashion out of China for about four years of my career. I did also develop luxury out of Italy for a good three years of my career, but I did spend a huge chunk of my career developing fast fashion out of China and I'm just way more sustainable with it. And that's just my point of view going forward. So I say all of that to say, follow me on Poshmark because I sell a lot of things, but back to the shoe collection. I sold most of my shoes on Poshmark. Um, not gonna get into what I sold really, but there are some like little <sighs> honorable mentions. Like I sold my very first pair of Christian Louboutins. And let me tell you why that's something to note. I, when I turned 28, 29, it's a blur. Um, when I was getting into my late twenties, I was working this career where I got to travel to Italy a lot. I started really kind of making money and having more of an international point of view. And I was single and, you know, living in this gorgeous apartment. And I was like, you know what you need? You need some red bottoms. That's what you need. That's like the icing on the cake for your new little life um, that you were developing in your late 20s. Like, I really felt like late 20s was like a really grown and sexy, very Joan from Girlfriends period and I was like I, you need Louboutins to go with that so for my birthday that year I bought myself a pair of black patent so Kates and they actually were never comfortable I never actually enjoyed wearing them I never actually enjoyed owning them the only thing I enjoyed was putting down my card and buying them for myself so those are a pair that I sold and honestly I sold them for dirt cheap I'm the kind of person like I said, I'm not a collector and I'm also quite sustainable with it. So I'm not trying to turn crazy profits on Poshmark. Like once I'm done, I'm done and I sold it. So once I sold those, I felt really empowered. And then I started selling shoes like from like what I love to what I, or from what I love least to what I love the most. Cause I really thought there were like two pairs I told myself I was not gonna sell. Like just keep these for nostalgic reasons. One was the Slingback Christian Louboutin uh, Paulina's which I'd never seen a single other person on the street with those on and those were actually only a hundred millimeters and I really could have kept wearing them but the truth of the matter is I was really struggling and feeling very unstable balancing on a pencil like I just didn't feel really stable walking on shoes like that these achy joints, sis, woof. Um, but I, I, you know, I wanted to keep those, especially because I got those 50% off at the Christian Louboutin store on Horatio Street in the Meatpacking District. That There's no more sex in the city living in New York moment than that. Like, to just be like, it's a Sunday, not really shopping, just like having a meatpacking day. I had brunch at Catch, I had drinks at the Gansevoort, and then we were just walking. I was with my girls, so of course a very Sex and City moment. We popped in, there was a sale wall. I never really look at sale walls with shoes because I'm a size 41. As someone who I said, you know, has worked in the fashion industry for a long time, 41s are bought to sell out because they're not considered common sizes. Most times, um, it's a little buyer tip, most size, most times sizes are bought in what we would call a size pack. So the range between like, what is it, 36, 
set five to 41, you're buying a certain number of each based on demographics or globally recognized demographics. And for some reason, it's globally recognized that not a lot of women are 41, which is not true. If you're a 41, please stand up in the comments. I need to hear you. We all need to hear you. But anyway, I didn't even really look at the sale wall. Like I said, I was having a great day. I was a little tipsy. And I just picked them up and I was like, these are cute. I was like, do you have them in a 41? She's like, no. And I was like, of course you don't. She's like, but I have a 40 and a half. And I was like, I'll try it. And it fit perfectly. I Those are my favorite shoes. I can't believe I sold them. And then another pair that I sold that like, <sighs> these burgundy suede socades. Oh, okay. So we could do story time on another episode, but I didn't really want to sell these because I got them for free. I met this guy. <laughs> I met this guy. We had this amazing first date. And then we had a second date, which was a lunch date. Um, and in the middle of lunch, he's like, we should go shopping. And I was like, should we? Because you know guys be doing a lot of this. But when it's time to pull up. Keep doing this. But then yeah, when I come around, you don't want to post up. So we literally went across the street to Tyson's Corner. This is in Washington, D.C. area. And we were like in the mall and like we're walking around the whole mall. And he's like, you're not really picking anything up. And I was like, you need to give me a budget. Because you know what I'm saying? Like if he had told me up to 500, which I think is low, but whatever. If he had told me up to 500, I was going to get another bracelet. If he had told me over 2000, I was going to get a bag. But if he had told me up to a thousand i knew i was going to get a pair of lubes because at this point i was like accumulating lubes like the luby monster and he was like huh ah, let's say like a thousand and i was like to name it marcus and so and i had already checked on the app that these were in stock in my size so when we got there i was like oh these are cute what do you think and he's like oh those are cute and i got them and i love them compared to my black patent so case these were actually very comfortable not well, no Louboutins are very comfortable. They were a lot more comfortable than the patent so Kate's, but I sold those too. I was like, yeah, you got them for free. Like, who cares how much you sell them for? You're not going to wear them. Your wobbly knees do not want to balance on this little pencil, girlfriend. So I sold all of my favorites. And you know what's funny? Now that I'm saying it, I'm sentimental, but not sad. Oh, there was another pair. There was a pair of white Louboutin, and actually not white. This color I think was called cafe or something like that or cappuccino, but it was like that cappuccino foam color. So not white, white, off white um, uh, Louboutin Cornets that I sold. And I got those for my birthday in Tulum. And actually, this is the sign. This was the time when I knew the mangles is wobbling girl. Because I remember going into Christian Louboutin in Saks Fifth Avenue, like the shop in Saks and being like, can't get nothing over 100 millimeters. And she was just like, okay. And I was like, but I want it sexy and I want it, you know, Louboutin sexy, but not over 100 millimeters because lately I've been feeling unstable. And this was 32. I remember it was 32 because my birthday was called hashtag 32 loom. <laughs> Clever. Just off the dome. I have a journalism degree. Anyway, um, so I had gotten these for that trip and I remember really liking them and Similar to like my Paulina Slimbacks, those were the two I wore the most, but still three years later, they were just so uncomfortable all to wear, period, because I just, my, I never felt stable in them. And there's something about spending over a thousand dollars on something that you don't feel safe walking in. Like, I know that's kind of extreme. Some of you girls are like, I, wear, I can run in stilettos and it's like, good for you. Like I used to be that person too, but just with my joints, like I just don't feel stable. So I ended up selling my entire collection. Um, and so then it was gone. And honestly, I felt a lot more free, not free, but I felt like you're doing the right thing. You've done the right thing. You are not going to wear these things like you need to now rebuild a collection from scratch. And I think especially over 2020, there were emerging shoe brands or designers or designer brands that now had new creative directors that were happy coming out with more um, cooler shoe designs that were not even up to 100 millimeters that were still sexy. I think in the early 2000s or the late 
2015, 2000s? What are we calling 2015, 2016, 2017? I don't know. But around that time where it felt like the higher the heel meant the sexier. But for me, I wanted to be able to buy shoes going forward that were still sexy. Like, I did not want to be... Like, there's a time and a place for kittens. Trust me, I think kittens get a very bad rep. There's a time and a place for them. But I wanted something that was still sexy, still high, because I wanted to be able to wear them with dresses and with formal attire and for going out. So still high, but they had to... They could not go over 100 millimeters. Like, I was not going over 100 millimeters for anyone. And I even tried buying, like... Remember those Saint Laurent platforms that were on sale a lot last summer? Can I tell you why they're on sale? I'm gonna give you a little buyer tea. So clearly they had bought this to be a big idea. One thing we always say in buying is buy it so it shows up because you're trying to communicate to the customer this is important. So of course they bought it so that it would show up. The idea was that platforms were probably gonna be a very big idea for spring, summer 2020. But spring, summer 2020, we were in the house. We we're in the crib, okay? So I think they had overbought it, over distributed it. So many SKUs, so many colorways. So I feel like everyone was getting those platform Saint Laurent's uh, sandals on um, sale last summer. And I try to be one of those too, but those were over 100 millimeters but still had like a great base of a platform and still I didn't feel comfortable in them. So I bought a pair and returned those. So felt very firm on can't be over 100 still need to be high and sexy need ankle support like you've got to <laughs> you've got to grip my ankle hold me down i cannot be wobbling like a baby deer out here so i went on a journey looking for those kind of shoes with that mindset in mind well redundant but with that mentality in mind um and it kind of took me a while i really like from the day i sold all of them i had this nice chunk of change um and i was like this is the money i'm gonna use to buy another pair and i you know it's funny <laughs> don't be like me if you're gonna sell your things and start from scratch i took a ten thousand dollar shoe collection and i think i ended up walking away with maybe like eleven hundred dollars maybe a little more. I don't know. It was my first time selling things like that for real. And I just, like I said, I was in a feng shui attack and I was like, get out, get out. No, why are hangers? I bet you there's serial killers less anal. And I just sold everything, but I'm definitely more value conscious on Poshmark now. But like I took all that money and was like, this is enough to start a new collection with one. So like I said, there were so many emerging brands last summer and Amina Mawadi was the number one on my mind. Like I was like, I have got to get some Amina Mawadi's. That sandal, I mean, that heel shape looked so stable to me that I was just like, yes, this is for me. I'll probably just buy all Amina Mawadi's. Like the same way I bought all Louboutins, I'm going to just buy all Amina Mawadi's. It did not work out that way <laughs> at all. The first pair of Amina Mawadi's I ordered from... Netta Porte. First off, I found buying Amina Mawadi's a black pair in my size very challenging. I wanted black because I feel like I'm starting from scratch to get a black pair. Like, I think that's what we all default to. Um, but it was really not that easy to find in my size. So the pair that I did finally find on Netta Porte had a strap around the toe and a strap around the ankle. And I was like, very stable. And that base heel, super stable ordered them they got there and they were not that rhinestone strap is so delicate so delicate i feel like and this is no shade to amina muadis because i still am shopping amina muadis today but i just remember feeling like wow um i get it like you're a new brand and you know you still have time i think um to kind of fix some quality issues and i know that rhinestone is starting to become a signature of hers but it's very very delicate and it's like you felt so delicate in them like you didn't want to ruin them but also so delicate in that i didn't feel secure in them i did know that i like that base heel though so i ended up returning those more advice i'm not trying to be like the auntie of the fashion internet but I do have a bit of wisdom, so let me share another bit of advice. If you are buying luxury things, don't think of it as buying. Think of it as shopping. I get it. Because things cost money, a lot of money, luxury items cost a lot of money, you 
especially if you're not like raining coins everywhere, you find yourself wanting to save up for something and buy the thing you really want. But if you buy that thing you really want and it gets to you in your home and it's not actually what you really wanted, return it. Do not find yourself having the thousand dollar lit pair of shoes that you can't walk in. Like, remember what I said about my silk It's like, I never enjoyed wearing them ever, not once. And that was a thousand dollars and I ended up selling them for like $250. So don't do it. I return them. I am a shopper. Okay. Like when I'm spending my little coins, I shop. I need to be able to walk up and down my hallway in it. I want to try it on with different things. And if I don't like it, I return it. And that's also another great part about the luxury shopping experience. These returns should be free. And if they're not free, don't give them your coins. So anyway, I return those. So the next pair of Amina Muadis I got had like a strap on the toe, not delicate rhinestone strap on the toe, and then had what looked like a wrap around ankles. Oh, I was like, this is exactly it. This is it. Those were also in black, and I was like, these I'm gonna love. I got them, it was very similar. I felt like because the toe was in rhinestone, it was, that toe strap was in rhinestone, it was a lot more secure, but that ankle strap, one nothing secure about that. Nothing, that was for show. So I returned those as well. I think I got those from Moda Operandi. Yeah, returned those, Use my free little return label. Sent those back. So then I tried for a third pair. I was like, Goldilocks in the three shoes, Cinderella out here. Like I was really like, I don't know why I felt so drawn to the shoe. I kept attaching the comfort to that heel because I'll tell you, you feel very secure on the Amina Mawadi heel. Very, very, very secure. So I was like, I really want them. I really want them to work. Um, and so then I got another pair that ended up being a snake pump with a wraparound tie strap. And those are so secure. I literally felt like Cinderella. I was like, it's me, this is my shoe. And I love them. They're like 95 millimeters. Actually, I have them right here. So they're like 95 millimeters. Um, so it's like not really a high heel. It's very stable. It's a pump, which I did not think I wanted. I really wanted more sandals. And it has this like wrap around tie on the ankle that you could either go around once and tie it in the back or go around twice. No, once and tied in the front and twice and tied in the back. And I absolutely adore these. So these became the first heels really in my collection. Honestly, like I just love them. I wear them all the time. I find them to be so comfortable, so stable. Like I absolutely, absolutely adore these. So these are the first pair of heels I bought after selling mad shoes. I feel like across this spring summer, everyone's really wanted Bottega shoes. I am everyone. I too wanted Bottega shoes. And I felt like what I really was drawn to was that the heels were shorter between 90 and 90 millimeters, but they were still stiletto shorter. So I kind of was keeping my eye out there for heels that were a little bit thicker. So the first pair I got were the board sandals. I believe that's what they're called, where it's got that intricate like ankle wrap or it appears to have that intricate ankle wrap. It's not so intricate um, and it's not that secure. Like it's just more decorative. And that's what I'm learning like a lot of things that look like they're secure for your ankle are actually a lot more decorative so i ended up returning those again to moda operandi i feel like there's someone in customer service at moda like who is this girl like she keeps buying things and returning them i'm a shopper these are my coins and i'm only going to spend them accordingly so i end up finding this pair on net porte I saw them in chocolate brown first, and I was like, I'm gonna buy the chocolate brown because I think that'll be a great nude on me. But I was going into my 35th birthday and I was gonna be in Miami and I wanted to wear brighter colors. So I actually ended up getting them in a yellow. So it's these. I don't even know what they're called because I feel like all the Bottega sandals are called stretch sandal. Um, all right, but I think these are called the line. Not sure. When I find out, I'll make sure I, you know, put in the comments. But this is so perfect. So let me see if I could just show you. Ah, I'm trying to show you. So they have this like, has this like, um, this goes between your first toe and the rest of your toes, which is perfect. This like holds down the top of your foot and then this wraps around the ankle twice. And as you can see, the heel is a little bit, 
Can you see that? A little bit thicker than a stiletto. These I love. The only thing about these, like a lot of the other sandals, like the Lido slides and the Lido mules and like the stretch sandals, they come in so many other colors. And for some reason, these only come in this yellowy green, um, a really gold gold, like go gold, like what we would have called ghetto gold back in the day. Not sure if that's appropriate, but like a super gold gold, a yellow gold, and then a chocolate brown. I think I'm gonna end up getting the chocolate browns, but right now I still wanna keep like exploring shoes. So now I only own two pairs of shoes. I went from like 10 to two, and for some who are listening, 10, 10,000, like that's not a crazy collection. But like I said, I like to wear my things. I'm not a collector. I don't wanna see a wall of shoes I never wear. I do not like to see my money on on the wall I like to see my money in my pocket in the bank in my belly so you know I want shoes that I'm gonna wear so as of right now I only own two pairs of heels which is so crazy for me so I'm trying to add to my collection and that's what you guys are gonna help me do today I know that was long taking you through like my shoe history but you know if you like fashion like me these things are sentimental and they mean something to you so let's not you know dismiss it it is okay to miss things it is okay to feel really special about things that are kind of material it's your money it's your body you should feel special about them so i have three pairs of shoes in my apartment right now right now and i'm only keeping one one um because like i said i'm building my collection in a really thoughtful way um, but also I started out wanting to buy black like we talked about with those first two Amina Muwadis and I end up with a white snake and a green yellow sandal and now we're getting into the fall and I'm invited to quite a few weddings um, the first wedding I'm going to is in a couple weeks so that's in September in LA it's a black tie wedding for my dear friend and sister Ashley Blaine Featherson who you might know from Dear White People on Netflix. Like, she's such a gem. Um, and it's black tie and I'm wearing a black gown, so I should have on a black shoe. So I finally came across three pairs of black shoes that I want to get. And I say finally, um, I typically wouldn't spend 3,000 plus on shoes at a time, but it's taken me a while to find them. Like the first pair, um, these Christian Louboutins, these were actually not my first choice. They weren't my first choice. My first choice were the second pair, which are these Amina Muwadis, because, you know, I'm always giving her a try. I don't know why. I just love that heel. So I'm constantly trying to make Amina Muwadi work. So the, um, I really wanted the Amina Muwadis with the multi strap and the jeweled buckle. Um, but they got snatched right out of my far fetch cart. Another little nugget, nugget of wisdom. Create wish lists on every single site that you love. Why? Because one, if you're not ready to pull the trigger right now, you shouldn't have to. But two, the thing about being a, creating a wish list, you're gonna get alerts when things come back in stock and you get alerts when things go on sale. So it's nice to create a wish list. So I created a wish list on this site. I finally put them in my cart. I fell asleep and then they were gone. Someone snatched them out of my cart. So I woke up in the morning, I was like, oh damn, I didn't buy those shoes, and they were gone. So I started looking for another pair, and I came across these Christian Louboutins, which I felt like I wasn't gonna buy lubes again. I don't know why, because I just had so many and sold so many. It was like, you sold all of those just to buy another pair. But I really like the heel on this, it being thicker and more um, stable looking than a stiletto. So I ended up getting those. Um, and then it had the, tie around the ankle so I, that looked to be really stable so I ordered those a couple days later while those ones were in transit Farfetch perked up and was like an item in your wish list is back and I was like oh y'all not about to snatch these from me again so I ordered those and so as I was waiting for those to come a pair that were on my wish list from matches like months ago months ago completely even forgot about them I got another email like an item from your wish list is back so I ordered those too so now I had three thousand dollars worth of shoes at the crib ready to try on and decide so that's what we're gonna do now so let's start in the order in which I received them so the first are the Louboutins. Let me tell you what I did like about them. I really liked this heel. I like that it is wider than a stiletto. I will say this curve kind of here, you can feel it. 
you can feel it when you're walking in them. You can feel that you're kind of on an angle. What I didn't love is the peep toe. I never liked peep toes. Since peep toes came out back in 04, 05, I never liked them. I've been wanting them to peep their way back to wherever they came from. I don't really like peep toes. But I will say, as someone who's a little less stable in the foot region, I like how secure I felt in the peep toe. I think I have to... It's a mental block of like either you're covering my foot or you're a sandal. Peep toes are not my favorite. What I did like, well, what's in the middle for me is the ankle strap. So I thought this is what holds you in. It does not. It definitely stabilizes you a little bit, but it doesn't really hold you in. It is, it's more decorative than functional. It is functional, but it definitely leans more decorative. This though, the sling back on this thing, holds my little ankle in place so this one was not my first choice but this is a very very strong contender for sure so these these are the ones these are the one i was searching for the one that i had in my far fetch cart i just told myself everything about amina muwadi's sandals that had not worked for me in the past have got to work for me with these of course, I absolutely love the heel. I just love this heel so much. Like I wish all heels were like this, but not to the point where I think people should be knocking off Amina Mawadi. Fun fact, not only have I worked in the fashion industry for 10 years, I also have a law degree and practice as a student attorney for the US Patent and Trademark Office. So I feel very strongly about intellectual property infringement. So no, I don't want everyone to copy Amina Mawadi, but I do wish more heels were stable like this and feel sexy this let's start with what i like this middle strap section i love i think so many shoes have the toe strap and an ankle strap but this middle bridge is so nice like i felt super held in right there this so this is a, a belt buckle a apparently but it's really not hard it's not easy to adjust at all and this it's kind of wider if you could see even just with my hands in it like there's so much space um and i felt like i was sliding out the front that is the number one feeling when i start to feel like that i don't want the shoe um i wish i could have adjusted this a little bit because it looks like there's one more hole but i because i don't know if i'm keeping them i don't want to play around with the buckle especially because satin is so delicate there were these alexander Vautier shoes that i bought that i absolutely adored i bought them in the midst of my first amina mawadi journey they had like a cone shaped heel they were so sexy but the satin buckle pulling it through a the satin strap pulling that through a jewel buckle made me so nervous satin is such a precious 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 fabrication like you can really ruin satin you have to be really delicate with it so the idea of trying to adjust like all these little buckles for the perfect fit for a shoe that i wasn't that i don't actually own own yet because in my mind as long as i'm within the return window i don't own own them i don't own them so i just felt like ugh, i tried these on so many times trying to make them work even like this buckle here i had to like re um i had to poke open some of the holes they were closed so poked open some of the holes to make sure this fit was perfect and I was like, just try. But it was so hard to get this out of the buckle. I was just like, ah, not worth it. So I love these. Um, if someone gave them to me as a gift, I would make it work. But because these are my little coins, yeah. Uh, this one breaks my heart because this is the one that I wanted first and foremost. And this was the pair that was on my uh, matches wish list that I actually forgot about. Again, Amina Mawadi heel, it's perfect. Again, a strap in the middle, which is perfect. Again, these are so delicate and precious. And this is just so wide. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, compared to any other um, sandals with the toe strap, I find this to be, the gap is huge. And I found myself falling out of this one. So this one I knew was a no right away. Um, so I think the winners are, I am shook. I really thought it was going to be the Louboutins because of how secure that peep toe was, 
but I just am not a peep toe girl. I just don't love them. Like, I just don't love a peep toe. There's nothing wrong with them. I don't like it on myself. Maybe it's because I'm a size 41 and I, I don't have like size insecurity about my feet, but something about having long and skinny feet, my feet are also pretty narrow. Um, I don't like the idea of showing some, but not all. I'm like, I'd rather show it all or show it none. So I didn't really love the peep toe, um, but I felt very, 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 very secure in the peep toe. I think another reason that I'm not gonna go with the Louboutins is because they're 100 millimeters. I, I felt hiked up there. I really did. And I was trying, I was trying, I was trying. I don't know if I can't do 100 millimeters anymore because I spent all the quarantine inside wearing Jordans, but I don't know. I couldn't do it. And I am actually surprised, but this is the winner. I did not see that coming at all. Actually, to be completely transparent, I tried them all really on really quickly when they first came in. And these ones, I ruled them out immediately. I was like, nope, I didn't even really give them a try. I felt like this try on with you guys was when I really, really tried them on. And I'm like, this middle strap moment, oh, hold me in, sis. Grip me up. That is perfect. This is a little wider than I would like, or a little, there's a little bit more space in here than I would like. But when this is right and this is right, I don't feel very unstable in here. I think the first time I tried it on, maybe this wasn't tight enough and I felt like I was moving around too much in here. But trying it around this go around with you guys, I'm like, these are it. So these are the third pair of shoes in my luxury shoe collection. I'm so happy I can finally take off this little tag. I know y'all were watching a try on like, she's keeping that little tag on there. Yes, I am. And you guys should too. Until you own it, own it. Don't take no tags off. So this is it. These I'm going to be wearing to ABF's wedding. And I'm just so excited about that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and going on this journey with me. It is a journey. Um, I know for some this is kind of frivolous, but if you're a fashion girl like me, you love this kind of stuff. Um, so as I continue to add to my collection, I'm gonna keep trying them on with you all, unboxing them with you all, reviewing them with you all. Sorry it wasn't like a true unboxing, but I just think let's get to the meat of it. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, so I'm going to be keeping these Amina Muadis, which I'm really excited about. Um, these are going to now be my second pair of Amina Muadis. And yeah, thanks you guys for tuning in. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.